So in this video, we're going to sketch the derivative of a piecewise defined function. And it's kind of going to kind of require that we pull together everything that we've done in the previous videos. So I'm just going to start working from left to right. I see there's no point on the end of this line segment, so that's going to indicate to me that there's an arrow there. There's no point terminating the end of that line segment, so I know there's an arrow there. It's going to infinity. And as in a typical GeoGebra uh, picture, we don't have the arrows on the X and the Y axes, which if you're doing a hand drawing, you would typically be expected to include. Here I want to notice I do have numbers on my axes. I'm going to go ahead and assume the standard uh, incrementation on those axes. So here we just start with this guy right here. So I have a piecewise defined function. It's broken into multiple pieces as a single function. I look at this, I see it's a constant. In fact, this is the line y equals two. Because it's a constant, the slope of it is zero. So to draw the derivative, I know for the constant, I'm gonna step down here and say, hey, the derivative is zero all along the line above me. But when I get here to x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, I see that I have a discontinuity in the graph, which means right there at this discontinuity, at the x value of that discontinuity, the derivative doesn't exist. So I'm going to put an open circle indicating that f prime doesn't exist for this value of x. Now I step across that discontinuity. Now I see I'm working with a constant function down here. This is y equals negative 1. Because it's a constant or a horizontal line, the slope of it is still equal to 0. So the, the derivative will continue now to be 0 until I get to the next location of a discontinuity. So here at negative 2, at x equals negative 2, I have a discontinuity in uh, the graph of f of x, which means the, right, the graph of f of x has a discontinuity there, which means f prime of x, the derivative of f, won't exist there. So I'm going to put an open circle indicating that that part of f prime doesn't exist. And now I can step across that discontinuity. Here's the graph of the function. When I look at this, I can see that it clearly goes down 1 over 1, so I see that the slope of this line is negative 1. It's a linear function, so the derivative is just the slope of the linear function. So I step down to negative 1. I put an open circle, and I draw in the negative 1 up until I get to this part on the graph. There's a cusp. And as we saw in video 1, derivatives do not exist at cusp. So I'm going to put an open circle there indicating that uh, the derivative is negative 1 up until you get to x equal to 0. The derivative doesn't exist at x equals 0 because of the cusp. I step over the cusp and I look at this line. This is a linear function too and I can see that the slope of it is over 1 up 1 so the slope is just m equals 1. And so I'm going to step up here and at y equal to 1. I'm going to put an open circle saying the derivative doesn't exist there, but I'm going to draw in the line y equals 1 for that slope of 1. So f prime is going to equal 1 over this interval. Now I have a discontinuity again, which means the derivative will not exist there. Now I step over here, and I see that I have a quadratic function it looks like, and I want to look at that quadratic and notice that right here at this minimum, the tangent line slope would be equal to zero there. So I know the derivative must be equal to zero. And if I draw in a dashed line at x equals, this is one, two, three, four, at x equal to four, which is where it looks like the location is for this uh, tangent line that has a slope of zero. I want to look to the left of that zero, to the left of this vertical line, and I want to visualize the tangent line slopes on the graph of the quadratic, and I notice that they are negative. So the derivative has to be negative to the left of this vertical line, and if I step across it, I see that the slopes need to be positive when I step across that guy. So I need to start drawing negative. <clears throat> we probably don't 
you don't have maybe enough in your pocket yet to know exactly where to draw it. So you do know it needs to be negative. So you're going to step below the x-axis somewhere and decide to start drawing your negative value. So suppose we decided to draw it here. Negative derivative, I would put an open circle indicating that, I, hey, there's a discontinuity here. So the derivative doesn't exist, but I know it's going to be negative. And I have to draw towards the place where the derivative is equal to zero. So I'm going to draw towards the zero. The graph, the derivative should switch to positive, so it has to step through. And I know that this graph goes forever, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, the derivative goes to infinity. There's no other special points past this to deal with. So I'm going to just wrap up the, uh, the, the drawing of the derivative at that, at that point. Um, this do, it does need to be a straight line. Y you don't know enough maybe at this point to know that, but the derivative of a quadratic, a second degree polynomial, is always going to be a first degree polynomial. Um, and, and that's why I drew it like a straight line. I knew to draw it like a straight line. Based on your knowledge at this point, had you drawn something curved, I probably would have been just fine with that as long as you are understanding it needs to start negative. There needs to be an open circle because of the discontinuity. I know the derivative is zero when the tangent line slope is zero, so I have to go through this point and I have to pass through because once I get on the other side of this vertical line, the derivatives need to be positive.